What's up guys, welcome back to the Drone Camps channel. Before we get started in today's video, I gotta mention the Patreon app that you can download to your phone. It's super awesome because it's kind of like a, a private Facebook for the Drone Camps community that supports me on the channel and you can make posts on here, you can message me directly and we can talk about your issues with your FPV quads. Um, also, you can get right into our Discord chats as well behind the scenes. We have Discord open 24 hours a day. You can log into Discord and once you're logged in, you can have general chat and it's really cool because it just keeps going and going and it's open for you to text. You can also upload short videos to it and photos as well. It's actually becoming something pretty cool that uh, a lot of our members are really enjoying. Um, it is a nice place to go in there, ask your tech-related questions. We also have moderators in there now. We're also talking about things that uh, other guys would prefer or refer to. If you're looking for a certain type of FPV-related gear, you can ask questions about that, post pictures of it, and share with the other guys. It's actually pretty cool, so you can check out the Patreon link down below and get involved in that community chat behind the scenes, and you get tons of benefits from that. Let's go ahead and get started with today's video. Oh, and by the way, the Patreon giveaway this month is coming up at the end of this month. Uh, first week of February, we're going to give away that RTF Tiny Hawk from Emacs, super awesome, and we're giving away the Eshin trash can that's been upgraded and modded by me. So, uh, some really, really awesome stuff. Let's go ahead and get started with today's video, all about the HD micro brushless, choosing the right one. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to do an honest review of some of the top micro brushless HD cinema quads out there. There is a jungle of different frames, different motor configurations, power configurations, and it can get really confusing. So this video is going to be great for you. If you are looking for one of these types of quads, I'm going to show you video from each one that you see here. We're going to talk about the specs of each one. Uh, we're also going to talk about power variations and how it affects camera performance uh, on the Split Mini 2. The Split Mini 2, as most of you know, is the go-to 1080p onboard DVR source uh, for getting that HD quality uh, to a smart card on your quadcopter. Um, and that is a very big mystery for some of these companies building these frames and putting them together, trying to just slap HD on something and uh, not experiencing Jello as a result of that power system. It has a lot to do with frame size, motor choice, prop, that you put on there, prop is everything. And I've told you guys this before. If you put a prop on there, that is what I consider a dog. It's a little bit um, misshapen. It's a very heavy pitch. Uh, different things about a prop can make a flight controller really upset. And all of that uh, vibration and gyro overcompensation results in jello straight to the camera. So the camera, and I've told you guys this before, it's kind of like the uh, the windows to the soul of the flight controller, the overall power system on the quad. It is the window of its soul. Um, and it really shows you a lot. Once you power up a quad, you flip that switch, those, those motors start rotating and those props start grabbing air. Once you start to throttle up at the high end, that's where things get really interesting. Once you're above 75% throttle is where you find out whether your quad has serious issues or not and uh, a lot of times we show punch outs here on the channel so that we can listen to the motors when we do our line of sight flight tests and then we come back down for some fpb uh, and you really don't know what a quad is going to be like until you strap your goggles on and you start flying it so today's video is going to be all about hd quality cinema quads uh, and which one you should choose by the end of this video you're going to know which one are my favorites and which ones aren't so much my favorite? I think there are some real big contenders here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you which ones are the best. Now, your biggest concern going into this is obviously going to be price. So we're going to talk about price of these five that are sitting here. They are ranging from around $150 up to, I mean, almost $250. So you really don't want to pick the wrong one. Um, and that's going to be a big thing in this video, not picking the wrong one um, so that you have 
a total bad experience. We'll start off with the iFlight IH3, and that's the one you see back here. And this is a three inch prop configuration, which I really like a lot for this type of format. Under 250 grams, you pretty much can fly this one just about anywhere. And this one actually does get really great video. The three inch prop seems to be better for me, getting less jello than the smaller two inch props do. Uh, the two inch props are very high RPM, so you're actually getting more vibrations to the flight controller and to the split mini on board. So um, that's one thing to keep in mind, two inch versus a three inch prop. Um, your three inch props have a little less RPM and maybe maybe better video because of that result. So um, that one's $150.79. It's a 142.5 millimeter frame and it is that H configuration. H configuration so that the camera has plenty of view out in front of the quad and no props in your video, which is great. Um, you don't see many true X configurations for your um, cinema micro brushless. So the next one on the board is the Signet, and that's from GEP RC. That one's $209 as it sits right there. The two inch version you see here is 115 millimeter. It's also very similar to the IH3 with that sort of H configuration again, but they have the camera sticking out a little bit further away from the props, which I like a lot. Uh, they also have a three inch version of that one, and that one's 145 millimeter running three inch props. Uh, and that one starts at $209 without a receiver. If you want to add an R9, that'll give you long range and you can get that R9 module for your Tyrannus. That'll put you up to about $229, which would be the ultimate sub 250 gram cinema quadcopter with uh, long range capability. That is really, really awesome. And in my opinion, probably one of the best choices uh, that you see here so far. Now, the next one is going to be the Diatone R249 HD. And I have huge expectations for Diatone because Diatone makes really high quality stuff. Most of their stuff that comes out of their factory is factory tuned and tested by the pilots before it actually gets out to the community which is great most of their quads fly really really well uh, this is a two inch model here and it's 95 millimeters so when you're putting larger motors like these i believe these were 1105s 1105 mambas actually yeah 1105 mamba 1105 is a really big motor for a sub 100 millimeter frame rocking some two inch props um, and, I, and I tried different various props on this quad uh, to, to see what different results I got with it for you guys but that one's coming in around $179.99 um, kind of a, a, a I guess a competitive price to the rest of the ones on the table here the next one in the lineup is the SPC Maker and they have so many different variations of this one it's called the K1 it's a 95 millimeter frame. Um, it is sort of a forward slung type of camera mount. It almost is it's trying to be an X configuration, but it's not. We have 1940 size props on there, probably the smallest, actually the smallest props on the table here. Um, very, very hard to put this big a power system on such a small frame and not experience any jello. Uh, it, it's almost like uh, the, the Rubik's cube out there to fix and complete this for a company to put that those components together on such a small frame and not get jello that is a big challenge so um, i think they're trying really hard to make this one great and um, if you get the version 4 that might have a little bit better video for you um, that one's around 165 dollars currently so the next one in the lineup is the sky stars baby turtle i like the baby turtle i, I think the baby turtle is a good alternative to the IH3. It almost seems to be like uh, just a really slim down, modest version of what iFlight made. Replaceable arms on the bottom. There's a forward slung camera. You have larger motors on here, lower RPM, and three inch prop. And I like this style prop. This is the post style prop versus the two bolt configuration, three inch prop. And these are the Emax Avon three inch props on this one. Um, so you can run more of a full size prop on this one, which I do prefer. There's also a larger motor version of this one as well. I'll try to put the link down below for that one. And I, I think that would be the better choice for this 
size of a quad. So um, that size is actually 145 millimeter and the iFlight just a little bit smaller and 142.5 millimeter. Now let's go ahead and talk about some specifics about each quad. The Diatone R249HD 2 inch edition 95 millimeter frame with 25 amp ESCs. It's capable of running a 4S battery on board. It has the Runcam Split Mini 2 on board, which is that single stack. You can put your SD card in the side. Now let's talk about this. Diatone tried to go really big on this one. They put 1105 motors on here, uh, capable of 4S, but you know what? Whenever I flew a 4S battery on here, I could not get the jello out of the video. No matter how long I tuned it, I sat and tuned it for a couple hours. I got really frustrated with the tune and I just could not eliminate the jello. The smaller they are, the higher RPMs you have on board, the harder they're going to be to tune because you have such a high power system, a really small prop, really high RPM on there, translates a lot of vibration back to the flight controller in the center, which sends it straight out to the camera. So um, the camera is vibrating more than I've seen on s than some of the other HD quads out there. So um, this one for $179. If you can find a tune out there somewhere on the internet, please share it below because I've tried other people's tunes out on YouTube and around the internet and I just could not get super smooth video that satisfied me for this quad. And that would be a huge disappointment if you paid $179.99 for this quad. You got a great quad here for freestyle. It's an animal, but you can't get super smooth uh, video out of it. And that's, that's a big disappointment to me. Um, it's under 250 grams, which is the qualification for this video which is really great. It has 200 milliwatt video transmitter on board. I also tried different props because different props also eliminate a lot of vibration. It came with those 1940 size uh, gym fan props. I switched it out for some 2036 um, dowel props, which didn't really get rid of the vibration at all. So um, yeah, there's, there's some issues with this one. And this one, unless you have a great tune, might be one to avoid. But let's go ahead and jump to the next quad now. Now you're looking at the next quad in the lineup, but I'm kind of going um, in what I see as um, my least favorite. So the first two that you're seeing here are probably my least favorite. And, and one of the reasons that this one also might be my least favorite is because this one also has 20 amp ESC on board and huge motors running smaller 1940 size props on. It actually came with the Avon two inch props and I went with the 1940s because these are actually a little bit smoother than the Avon props. They're a little more aggressive and I talked about that in our original review of the K1. There's also been tons of variations of this quad. There's a version one, two, three, and now there's a version four of this quad. They're really trying hard to make it a successful selling quad and get rid of that jello. And with these little quads, that's what it's all about. If you fly it out of the box, and you see jello right away and then you can't tune it then what's the point of having it you spend 165 dollars for something that has um, total crap for video so uh, we have a big challenge here getting this vibration out of such a small frame 95 millimeters running 1105 motors the 4s battery that this one can run is also useless because you get tons of jello it's not tunable we had a really hard time just trying to get the jello out of 2 and 3s the 2S battery on this one, round of 650, is going to be the sweet spot for the best video quality on this quad. Uh, when I was running 3S, when I powered up to a 3S battery, that increases the RPMs on the quad, and um, it did result in jello at the high end of the stick on the throttle. So, um, yeah, uh, this, so this one is going to be the best video is going to be on the 2S battery, which is a shame because it can run all the way up to a 4S battery. Now you could fly it and have fun in your goggles on 4S and just really rip and freestyle, but you're not going to bring home the best video. Even in your goggles DVR, it's going to look really bad. So um, you're going to have to stick to a 2S battery on this one if you want decent cinema style, uh, what we consider cinema style video on this quad. So it has all the bells and whistles on here, but it's a continuous work in progress. So I think that might be why this one's about 30% off right now. And uh, you're going to see future iterations of this one coming down the pipe from SPC Maker. I think this one is um, probably also one to possibly uh, avoid unless you want to just run a 2S battery 
and fly it like that. You can go back and look at my full review and uh, just let me show you some of the video here on screen so you can see. This one had decent looking video and it really did look really great. It looks smooth on 2S. I can't complain. Uh, but my only complaint is that it has all this power in the system but I can't have access to it and that's kind of a bummer. Um, you know, why put all these <laughs> huge components on here if you can't actually justify the video on a 4S battery? So, um, yeah, that's, that's going to be a challenge. The biggest challenge in the industry right now is getting a 95 millimeter quad with 1105s to get rid of the jello. And that's some of the original issues that we had running 4S on 2 inch quads when I was trying to build them myself custom. My first experience is trying to build a micro brushless before even any company was selling a micro brushless at this size, I was experimenting with 4S configurations because HJLRC was releasing some huge, uh, I think they were like 35 amp, 20 by 20 ESCs. And I'm like, hey, I'm gonna build a 4S micro brushless. Here we go. I started out with 1103 motors and even had some uh, issues moving all the way up to 1106 and still having tremendous vibrations and um, very hard to tune. The smaller they are, the harder they are to tune. More power, smaller, just harder all around. Um, so this one is okay on that 2S battery, but again, not one of my big favorites. Um, so uh, kind of a little bit lower scoring than some of the other ones you're gonna see in this video. Okay, so now we're gonna look at the Skystar's Baby Turtle. I'm just gonna put some video up on the screen so you guys can see that. I tested this quad out on different batteries again for you guys to see which battery would be the sweet spot for jello free video and what i got the best result from was the 3s 850 and that's a pretty good size battery it's going to get you flight times upwards of a three to four minutes about three and a half to four minutes if you're just cruising kind of a slow flow cinema hd style flying really smooth and uh, not with a lot of aggressive pitch bump if you do a lot of aggressive freestyle you're going to get around uh, three minutes with that uh, maybe even under that if you're really pushing on the throttle but this is what happens to be one of my favorite configurations the h frame at 145 millimeter with even 1408 motors on here it seems to be a little bit larger motor than i would normally put on this type of configuration but I love this frame. It's very similar to the IH3, like I showed you before in the beginning of the video. It has that two stack right here. It has the, the newer Runcam Split 2 on there. You can see that single stack in there. It's not the older one like some of the other quads have on there. Um, but I like this two up configuration, 20 by 20, side by side. That's a really cool way to do things because um, if you wanted to add another stack or get a receiver in there, you do have some extra space here because of that split mini 2 which is great now I'm also using the HQ props those are the 3x3s three on those 1408s and uh, a lower pitch prop will give you smoother results in your video and it will be less aggressive to sagging out your battery and just drawing more amps out of the battery therefore giving you a shorter flight time um, so I also like the top mount configuration for the battery because that does get seems to get the CG in the right place for making great HD jello free videos. This one also has a 200 milliwatt transmitter on board with smart audio. You can go in with your sticks, change up the power configuration and the bands and the channels. Uh, but what I think we have here is a quad that if you pay $180 for it, yeah, it's a little bit cheaper than the IH3 with this single stem motor like we have on here. The I believe the single stem motor version of the IH3 is an upwards of $225. Um, so I'm going to show you the IH3 with the smaller motors on there. Probably going to get you maybe a little bit better flight time than that larger motor configuration. Maybe even a little longer flight time than this one. I also tested something as large as a 3S2200 on the IH3, which seems kind of crazy. But this one has a truck bed very similar to the IH3. If you move this back further, you could even get much larger battery. Now it's going to fly heavier but you're gonna get quite a long flight time with something as huge as a 3S2200. That is getting really heavy. Um, so the heavier you go, the more possibility you have of stressing out your power system and um, making something burn up. So keep that in mind. Um, weight equals more stress on the power system. Um, but I think we have a winner here as far as the video goes. I think the video looks great on this one versus the price. You're not gonna be disappointed if you get the Sky Stars Baby Turtle. 
And now, guys, you're looking at my friend, the GEP RC Signet 115 millimeter, two inch cinema drone. This one surprised me a lot. Now, I saw the other version of this come out, which has a little larger frame, similar to the IH3 and the uh, other baby turtle sitting over here, 145 millimeter frame. That one is a little more expensive, like I told you before in the beginning of this video. Uh, with an R9, it's around $229. But this one, with an XM Plus as it sits, the way you're looking at it right here, is $209. Um, this actually happens to be one of the best in this video today. Um, I love the configuration of this. Also, another H frame, frame configuration with a larger pagoda on the back. 200 milliwatts, smart audio, all the bells and whistles. It has the split two mini up front here. You can see that single stack. And then just above that is where my receiver is with my antennas running out the bottom. We have LEDs in the back and a TPU mount back here for the antenna, which is great because you're not likely to break this off when you crash. Also, top mount battery configuration. It comes with 3M dampener right there to hold your battery in place. Just a little rubber sticker that goes on the very top and you get two battery straps on top here as well so if you run a longer battery here you could possibly uh, hold that down with two straps kind of nice you don't need two straps but they give you two straps so it's nice to make sure that battery doesn't get ejected you also have the xt30 back here which is great you have a buzzer a full-size buzzer built into the back which is really cool so if your signal you have a signal loss it'll start beeping uh, also activated by a switch, which is really great. And then over on this side, which is really clever, they have your video capacitor right here for cleaning up your video signal going back to your goggles, which is really slick. So they, they utilized this TPU mount in the back in a lot of ways. I also like the fact that their X-T30 is up here out of the way of the props and you have no chance really getting the battery cable caught in your props and that, that can be an immediate failure. I've had other people using other quads in an HD configuration like this get that battery strap caught and just have a total failure um, mid-air. It's really bad when that battery cord gets yanked out but I like the configuration of this one. It has plenty of camera protection up front with this aluminum brace. It's light enough under 250 grams. It has a three millimeter unibody on the bottom that two up 20 by 20 configuration as well. Same thing as the IH3, but just a little bit smaller and lighter. So if you're looking for something smaller and lighter, the Signet is probably one of my favorites out there right now, running a two inch prop configuration for HD. They have actually done something here by making the frame just a little bit bigger than some of the other quads running these two inch props. And they've gotten away with a great result in the video as, as, as a result of that. Um, so that's what we're trying to do here. Get a two inch prop to make great video. And maybe sometimes the only way to do that is to either motor down on a smaller frame by making it a smaller motor like an 1103, or if you want to motor up, you need to go a little bit larger with the frame. And that's why Gap did, and they actually pulled it off, which I think is really tremendous. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a frame obviously borrowed from iFlight's IH3 configuration, but you know, why reinvent the wheel when something works really, really well? They've made their own version of it, and it is very streamlined on the top. Look how thin this is across the top of this quad. It's very thin. It's just such a cool design. Took some bumps up front. My run cam survived, and it really does make great video. So the best Probably the best battery configuration for this one, again, is going to be the 3S850. Um, you can run 4S on this one, but it's, it's probably not going to be the best video experience for you. Uh, 20 amp ESCs on board, and I believe these were 1106s, so a little bit larger motor than your 1105s on the Diatone, and I believe these were 1105s on the SPC Maker K1 as well. So yeah, a little bit larger motor, a little bit larger frame, and much better video. And the price is decent on this one as well. Um, yeah, but I think 
you're going to get what you pay for with this one. Around the $200 price point, you're not going to be disappointed with this one. This one is definitely one of my favorites. All right, guys, now we're moving on to the iFlight, the famous iFlight IH3. I took this quad out to the Oregon coast, and I get some amazing results from flying this quad. I tested it on 2, 3, and 4S for you guys. It does have 20 amp ESCs on board, capable of handling up to 4S, but again, the sweet spot seemed to be around the 3S 850 battery seemed to be the best. This one has larger motors out of the bunch uh, for this two bolt configuration. Uh, as far as micro brushless motors goes, this one's running an 1108 motor system on here. Uh, I got really good video results out of this one. It's running those three inch Avon props, which are stock, which came with it. I didn't change anything there. They do have a larger version called the IH3 Pro. That's a three inch model uh, running the standard prop configuration. You could run those three inch HQ props like that if you wanted. And I believe those were 1408s as well, similar to the Baby Turtles configuration. That was just a little bit more expensive. But in my opinion, if you were gonna buy either of those two, the IH3 or the IH3 Pro, I would probably likely go for the IH3 Standard Edition because it's such a good price, around $150. The other one is gonna get you an upwards of $200. And it seems like that 1408 motor configuration with this type of frame is getting you up there because some of the components, uh, the motors are just more expensive. But the reason that I prefer this one is because I believe this one gets me a little longer flight time, pulling less amps out of the battery, a more efficient motor, kind of motoring down a size, um, so to speak. So this is the higher end of the micro brushless kingdom motor right here 1108s are getting pretty big and you're going to make the jump to um, much larger brushless motors beyond this motor on a micro brushless so um, some would also classify it as a different class altogether but the video that i got from this quad was outstanding i think for the price it's also the best choice out of any of these quads um, I do like the GEP RC Signet. I think that one's also a contender, but that one, even though for me, it seems like a neater design, uh, running two inch props as well, I prefer the three inch prop for my HD video. And that seems to be the best flow and style for me in the way I like to shoot my HD cinema video. So um, I believe I'm gonna leave that up to you. Sometimes people like to fly faster and rip a little harder this one might be a better freestyle quad whereas this one is going to probably better be suited for smooth aerial hd videos um, those breathtaking fpv videos that you see people fly in exotic locations i think this one would be the one that i would take on an airplane halfway across the world with me if i was going to choose any of these quads it would be the ih3 standard edition right here this is the one to get get this one before it sells out because um, I, I think this one is uh yeah again the the clear winner out of this category and that, that's the one i can stand behind and recommend uh, honestly put an r9 on there and do some long range with it like i did i have the r9 tucked in just behind the camera there and it came with these extra antenna poles you can run out the front not my favorite configuration because it did end up going up into the prop right here and I broke one of those tubes off. Not a big deal though, because it didn't break the antenna. I can just replace that tube and uh, continue flying. But you also notice that I have a lower camera angle on here as well. And for HD video, for really smooth HD video, you don't really need to have your camera cranked up to 35 degrees to get the best video. If you want nice, smooth aerial shots, try experimenting by lowering your camera down to about 20 degrees or under maybe even 15 to 10 degrees and you'll see that all of a sudden your videos look a lot straighter and truer so it's it's going to get you a much better looking cinema hd style video if you do that uh, and that's going to um you're going to you're going to be impressed with the results try it bring your camera down just a little bit but again i think that this one has probably the best frame configuration and iflight was the first originator of this type of frame and um, what they have here is very progressive for the entire FPV community for this type of frame. Uh, the two up stack right here has been done by a lot of people but this frame has been copied by so many different companies. 
uh, and, and making variations of it like our uh, friends over there at Sky Stars. But you have a lot of additions that come with this one as well. You get a lot of value for it. You get those extra tubes for your antennas. You get a lot of TPU accessories. You get dual capacitors on the back, which I think is outstanding. You get that recessed lollipop antenna back here. So you're not likely to break that off. And your XT30 is also recessed in the back. So again, um, all the bells and whistles are on this quad. And there's also a built-in beeper on the quad. So in case you go down or you lose it. All right, guys, you're at the point now where you have a great idea of what to go for out there. I've given you my three top choices right here. I've also talked about other quads that didn't quite um, hold up to our expectations. And that is good information for you so that you know it when you're, when you're going to make your purchase. You don't buy the wrong thing. And that's why a lot of you guys watch the channel for the honest reviews. Uh, these have been road tested. I've taken them out there on trips and I've flown them in all different types of conditions up and around mountains, uh, around the ocean, and um, all over the place. These quads have been everywhere with me. So um, starting with the iFlight IH3, that one's going to be my choice. Uh, number one pick for this top five video. And um, the Baby Turtles, that's going to be number three. And the Gep Signet 2-inch edition, that one's going to be number two. So uh, one, two, and three right there. And depending on which one you like the best for configuration, um, two inch versus three inch, GEP RC was the only one that was able to pull it off to my standards with a two inch prop. So uh, I got to give a thumbs up to GEP RC for doing that. I think the Signet is one of the coolest little micro brushless HD quads out there ever on the planet right now. So um, if you decide to buy that one, the price is decent on that one. Uh, but it is a little more expensive than the competitors. However, the competitors seem to have terrible video. So you get what you pay for, you know what I mean? So this one got the best video and it, in my opinion, um, is, is one of the best choices out of all three of these. So, um, and coming in at number three, the Sky Stars Baby Turtle. I got to give it to Sky Stars as well because Sky Stars has been raising the bar on all of their stuff lately. And they're trying to show that they can be a competitor to iFlight and other companies like Gap. And I think they're winning it with a little bit better value than some of the other companies out there. So uh, great value from Sky Stars, and they're producing some really cool stuff. But hopefully this video helps you out and uh, you have a better idea now of what's good and what's not so great out there. Uh, one thing I'm also going to warn you guys about is choosing the right SD card for your split mini or split mini two. This card is a SanDisk Extreme and it's a 64 gigabyte card, which I've been testing out for a long time. Usually I use it in my GoPro Hero 7 and it works great in my Hero 7. But when I put it into my split mini two a couple days ago on my GEP RC Signet, the video froze up several times on me. And, it, and if I look at this card really closely, it actually says that it is a class three on here. Um, and I didn't realize that, but you want to run something like a class 10 or better on these run cam split twos. Otherwise you're going to have some issues uh, with frame freezing up. And when the frame freezes up on the quad, all of a sudden you're going to have big issues and you're going to crash your quad. So uh, keep that in mind. Make sure that you choose the right SD card for your quad. But thanks again for watching my videos, guys, and the honest results of all the testing here. Hopefully it helped you out in making the right decision uh, for the purchase. I'll have some of the links down below that are my favorites and my not so favorites will also be included. You guys can check out all the specs and uh, look at the video here for yourself on the channel and decide for yourself which one you would like to get. But um, yeah, you see my favorites sitting here on the bench and we're gonna have a lot of fun coming up. It's springtime, so more flying outdoors and taking more trips here on the channel. Thanks again for watching you guys. I'm Justin Davis. Be well, take care, and fly as much as you can. Happy FPV everybody. I'll see you on the next one.